I've never seen a yacht like this in my dreams Sailing the seas in boats so grand, it seems But we're just humble sailors Salt upon our cheeks Go classic every day of the week Hey everybody, welcome back to Boat Fool Sailing. Thanks for tuning in last week and thanks for watching this week. So, in my last Boat Fool's Top 10 in the great state of Maine for less than $25,000, my number one pick was a 1980 Victoria 30, list price of $18,500. Now, I was really smitten by this boat and it turns out she's a Chuck Payne design and that explains it because I love Chuck Payne boats. Um, she was built in the UK, only 50 of these were made and um, I contacted the seller because I really wanted to go see her. She's down in the Booth Bay area and the seller has agreed to let us tour the boat. So that's what we're doing today. I'm really jazzed up about it. So it's a little bit murky as to exactly when this boat was built. Um, the ad states 1980. However, sailboat data suggests that uh, the Victoria 30 wasn't first built until 1986. Other sources suggest that the uh, Victoria 30, was, who, which was designed by Chuck Payne, was designed in 1979 and first built in 1982. The sister ship to the Victoria 30 is the Lee 30, which is uh, built here in Maine by Morris Yachts, also Chuck Payne design, uh, and they're almost identical. Um, and she was built in the early 80s too, our late 70s. So we're a little bit unclear as to the exact age of this boat, but I think with a deep dive into any paperwork or through a survey, we'll find out. But in any event, really fired up to go see this boat because uh, she is beautiful and I'm really hopeful that uh, she's going to be as good as I hope. Um, the weather's kind of crappy today, so we're going to go down tomorrow and check her out. So we're going to jet down to Booth Bay, we're going to tour the Victoria 30, and we're going to see what we find out. Let's go. Okay, welcome back everybody. So uh, last week on the Boat Fools Top 10, um, this boat, a 1980 Victoria 30, was my number one pick of the week. And I told you then that it's gonna come down and take a look at this boat. And the owner's daughter, KC, uh, was kind enough to meet me here so we could take a tour. And she's just been put under a blue tarp, so excuse the Smurf look of both of us. But um, we're gonna do our best to give you guys a great tour of this boat. and. We're gonna ask Casey some questions about this boat because she really looks beautiful. I'm really excited about it. So um, thanks Casey for meeting me here and showing us your boat. Um, so she's for sale because of declining health of your father. Yes. And um, tell us a little bit about the boat, like how long it's been in the family and how she came to be and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, um, so it's actually an interesting history behind the boat. Uh, we got this, well, I would say 12 years ago about now. Okay. Um, my mom had passed away through cancer and we've been active in the cancer society oh, nice. and we got this through a auction um through okay. the american cancer society oh wow so yeah so that's how we ended up with this boat um and it's originally i think the owner was from rhode island okay um and that owner had had it under um like under a tarp for years and okay. it was pretty pristine when we had bought it it was yep. in impeccable condition they had kind of had a tragic ending to their. Oh no! Yeah, so this boat has had an interesting history. A tragic ending. You can tell us, or we're, should sure. we not tell us because yeah. we don't want anyone to think there's bad no, features. No, no, so didn't happen on the boat. No, <laughs> the person was in New York City and got hit by a cab. Oh wow! And okay. passed, and the family had kept the boat, and they had sailed this boat. The original owner had sailed this boat transatlantic. Yep three times so wow. she has been across the atlantic now three times well, not under our power okay but she was built in the uk so did they deliver her to the us from the uk yep oh wow yeah okay so it's That's from the uk cool. i i'm not sure if the original owner sailed it or yep. the backing on that um but it's been across now twice all right so obviously she's a seaworthy vessel yes uh all right so your family has owned her for 12 years mm -hmm. and um you know, on a cursory look, in the listing you said she was in fair condition. Yep, correct. Um, I noticed one scrape on the side, which you guys will all see uh, later in the film, but is there anything, I mean, why did you list it in fair conditions? Because it's been sort of left untended for a couple of years? Yeah, I mean, it's going to require some work and some grit to, yep. you know, bring her up to her, you know. Pristine pris condition. I wouldn't say pristine, but to, a, you know, working manageable condition i mean you can hop on the boat and sailor it is in working condition now but i mean just little details you know to really bring it up to yeah you know 
Um, to snuff. To snuff. Well, they say in sailing, if it looks good from 20 feet, then it's perfect, right? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's um, what we'll assume. But the teak, I mean, the teak decking looks great. Thank um, you. Were there any major retrofits that your dad did or your family did or you did? No, um, not really. And, you know, my dad kind of, as I said, it came in pristine condition. Yeah. So it's pretty much been what it is. Like yeah. it's in its original condition, so yeah. to put, without much, too much other work into it. Yeah. Um, he had rigged something for solar panels. I don't know, you know, how that setup is anymore. Okay. Um, and we did redo the engine in about 2016, 2015, around then. Okay. Um, and it had it rebuilt or re a new one put in? Rebuilt. Rebuilt. Okay. A rebuilt Yanmar. So it's the original Yanmar. Yep. Do you know how many engine hours are on it roughly? I can okay. speak on that. Uh, that's all right. And, and, uh, you mentioned that you solo sailed this. So, so, yeah. okay. So you guys hear that everyone, uh, you can solo sail this easily. Yeah. And, uh, and I would, as I said to you, it's like a little big boat. It's 30 feet, but it seems like there's a lot more boat here than a 30 footer, a typical 30 footer. Um, and really excited to check it out. And so, uh, it's going to require, uh, some sweat equity and some, uh, TLC and there's a complement of sales. So you, you, like you said, you could sail this away today if you wanted to. You, you could. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I all mean, right. and it will come, you know, with all the equipment that I can yep. find. Okay. Um, is there a Dodger or Bimini or anything like that? Or is it just as we see it here? Just, just as we see it here. Okay, I didn't yeah. have a Bimini on this boat. No. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's go take a look. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. We are up on the very bow of the Victoria 30. And yeah, you can see she's got a nice 25 pound CQR. And the deck really looks to be in nice shape. And Casey said she has... Uh, felt around for any weird spots, but everything really looks great. Um, it's a little tough to maneuver up here, but we're doing our best. But this is really, really pretty. And you've got a nice forward facing porthole here. And I'm trying to get a picture of this bow. Um, but she's got nice high bulwarks here. And it looks like the lifelines were replaced with stainless at some point. So you don't have to worry about that, which is great. And the hatches all look great, and the deck all looks great. Um, and side decks and i have to say for uh the age of this boat i see very little crazing in the fiberglass for a 43 year old boat and that's impressive as casey was saying she has been undercover for a while so that could be part of the reason that she's been out of the sun but really looks great um really looks nice needs a nice scrub but the tow rail looks fantastic um, really, really in nice shape. Looking up toward the bow. Again, sorry for the blue light. We'll have to, but we're going to show you some photographs of her not covered, so you'll get a sense. I'll just duck under here. Okay, we're looking down into the main cabin. Gimbaled stove on port. Nav station on right. Uh, on the starboard side and a very old uh, Raytheon radar. Does that still work? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Antique treasures right there. <laughs> uh, like I said, she's not had much updates. No, so you would, anyone oh, buying this boat would want to update your electronics. And uh, one uh, berth to starboard and one berth to port with a little pipe berth. Uh, up here that would be good for a pet it does have a lee cloth so you could put a small child up there or your dog or cat um, but great headroom in here so I am 6'1 and my head is just touching the top of the hat on uh, the ceiling and I'm 6'1 and change actually so if you're 6'1 or less uh, you'd be able to stand up down here just fine so uh, really cool down below um, so moving forward we've got uh, the head uh, on starboard and a v-berth uh, just to forward of that and uh, this looks like a nice serv serviceable head uh, it's got a little sink uh, which is perfect and it's got a holding tank obviously because you've got uh, holding tank deodorant there um, but we'll ask Casey about that but you can totally close in this head um, the doors work everything closes and is plumb as it should be um, which is really nice 
and going up into the V-berth. Uh, wow, that's really pretty. Um, usually sleep two up there, and it's nicely finished with the wood, and you've got a nice opening port and a hatch and a fan and a filler piece here uh, that presumably goes in the middle here. But um, craftsmanship looks really nice. Drawers. Open. And here's a preview of what your sole floor could look like throughout the boat. A little storage to port and starboard and mosquito netting, it looks like. Um, so really great. So you could, um, you know, uh, you could easily uh, use this without um, too much issue. There's plenty of room in this head and uh, it's nice and clean. Um, so now looking back into the main salon, um, you can see the room you have here. You can see the sole floor does need a little love and attention. Not a big deal. But all of this really looks great. You got storage behind um, all these cushions and just the craftsmanship looks really, really nice. Um, you know, I think with a boat this age, you'd want to get a survey, especially for insurance purposes. Um, but, uh, by and large, it really looks nice. Uh, here's your tiller. This boat was usually, uh, outfitted with a tiller from the factory. This one does have wheel steering. You got a nice table that folds down here and, uh, looking into your bilge, uh, there's your, looks like your raw water intake there and strainer and it looks like you could use some bilge cleaning on this um looks a little dirty but a uh, nice quarter berth back here plenty of room for a normal size adult here is your switch panel uh your gimbal stove um galley sink it does have a pressurized water system looking into your ice chest and Pots and pans, storage, cupboards, everything seems to work. Um, so we're going to take this apart and see if we can take a look at the engine, which was uh, recently serviced and apparently started right up. Uh, so yeah, again, I think um, you've got uh, keel step mass, which is nice, and it just needs to be refinished on this floor and you'd be in good shape. Okay, so here is your rebuilt Myanmar engine. Now... It does look like she could probably use a tune-up um, and maybe some paint and some cleaning, but uh, maybe some new belts. That's definitely a little loose, uh, but uh, it was rebuilt in 2016. We're not sure of the engine hours, but um, having been rebuilt, that's a good thing. And uh, this is a nice, uh, easy engine to work on. In fact, I took a class where I believe we rebuilt this exact engine. So I can tell you not bad to work on. And I think a good diesel mechanic could tell you uh, what kind of shapes is in. But um, like, like I said, rebuilt in 2016. So that's huge. All right. And looking back, uh, let's see what we can see. But as I said, oh, I was got uh, LP gas uh, emergency shut off, which is great. So that's uh, that's been updated at some point. Um, looking out into the cockpit, like I said, this is a, definitely a little big boat. It's only 30 feet, but she seems really quite spacious, and uh, I love it. I really do love it. And this is kind of cool. If you're down below at your nav station, you can see through to your compass and, and get a heading. So that's pretty slick. All right, so I just wanted to show you a couple things back up in the cockpit. Um, Looking aft, uh, you can see it's really a neat shape. It's sort of a delta uh, shape instead of a full uh, double under look up here. It's, uh, it's angled off, which is kind of neat and a very unique and pretty look in my opinion. And, you know, the, the combings are high in the cockpit. They kind of hit you um, sort of mid back when you're sitting in the, uh, in the main cockpit area with your feet down. And it's very comfortable, I can imagine. If you were to get a Dodger for this, uh, you would be nice, nicely protected up here. Uh, you've got your traveler system uh, running across your bridge deck here. And, you know, certainly uh, not bad for uh, single handing. If you were to uh, take this boat on yourself, you would have easy access to that and your primary winches. Um, and then 
you do have a storage lazarette out here and it looks deep with plenty of storage and all the fiberglass looks great um, all the tabbing looks nice against your bulkheads there uh, really again like I said for both this age I see very little crazing in the fiberglass which is kind of astounding so I wanted to just take one more shot up from the helm station um, nice wheel here controls uh, you've got your um, gusher pump right there and uh, I suspect your emergency tiller access is in this aft hatch, which I cannot access currently, but um, really stinking pretty. And I think, like I said, that price of 18.5, I've seen these going between 30 and 50,000 um, in decent condition. And I think it wouldn't take much to get this boat in good condition. Um, again, a survey for both this age, but all of the teak looks like it's, it's really... Um, you know in good shape i would sand it and probably uh, put some epiphanes on there and varnish it uh probably five or six coats and maybe more and really protect it if you want to make her uh, really pop i think it'd be beautiful but in the meantime um according to kc you could fire up the engine and go sailing tomorrow she's got all the parts uh all the sails needed and you could go but I love uh, these primaries, self-tailing um, on both port and starboard. And you've got lines led aft to the coach roof here uh, for, again, if you wanted to single hand this boat, you could definitely do it. But uh, for the record, the coach roof top is white and the uh, side decks are all teak and everything really looks to be in good shape. All right, so my mic stopped working, so I have to do a voice over here, but it actually gives me a little bit of freedom. So this is a really pretty boat, pretty lines, and you've got a full encapsulated keel, which is fantastic for coastal and offshore sailing. No keel bolts to worry about. You've got a protected prop and rudder, which is uh, keel hung, which is great for uh, main lobster pots, that sort of thing. But um, all in all, the hull looked great until we got to this section where it looks like she was either on her side on a rock or maybe at a pier, but it gouged the fiberglass. I think it is not a huge deal, but it is going to require a surveyor and someone who specializes in fiberglass repair to take a look. And then there's one spot that I want a surveyor to take a look at, which is right about here where this drain hole is. And there appeared to be um, some blistering and it was the only section on the hull that caused me real concern. So it's going to be worth having a close look at that. All right, here's another look at those gouges on the starboard side. Some are below the waterline, which have been painted over and are probably superficial, but the ones above the waterline I would have attended to. Um, and obviously the boots right needs a good clean and wax and buff to get that oxidation out. But overall, the bottom looked pretty great. I would probably soda blaster, uh, put a couple of barrier coats on and then build up some uh, paint from there. But um, nice, again, nice protected prop, protected rudder, all looks really great um, below the waterline and ready to go. So switching over to port side, again, you got the nice full keel. And, you know, even though she has a waterline of uh, 23 and change feet, I think it's going to be a comfortable ride once she heals over. She's a nice stiff boat, well over 40, and uh, the port side all looked good. No evidence of blistering um, or scrapes and looked like it just needed a good wax above. And the other great thing about this boat, it is the original gel coat, and that is significant. So, um it's really, really a pretty boat, and I think uh, I would get a good survey, but overall the hull on, on uh, port side really looked to be in good shape. So we found the mast, and it had a very nice Harkin roller reefing system on it, and it was a dual track uh, foil head stay, which also looked to be in really nice shape. The uh, standing rigging on this boat is 1x19 stainless steel stranded rigging, and uh, it all looked to be good. The sections I felt, I didn't feel any barbs. But while the mass is down like this, I would have a rigger check it out. It also had an 18-inch Garmin radar dome. Now, we don't know if this works, and we don't know if there's a chart plotter. It's not HD, uh, but it looked serviceable, and who knows? So that'll have to be checked. But the running rigging all looked great. Uh, and uh, I did find one troubling spot on the standing rigging near the cap shot, which I'll point out right here. 
and I would just have a regular look at that and make sure everything is in serviceable and working condition. But overall, uh, the aluminum mass was in, I would say, uh, average to above average condition and the running rigging just needs to be cleaned and used and it will clean right up. Uh, we saw the boom up on the boat. That also looked good. So as far as uh, this equipment goes, it all looked nice and ready to rock and roll. But like I said, I would get a rigger, check it out while it's down on the ground like this. Okay, messing around on boats. God, Ugh, I love it. I love that boat. All right, so my knee-jerk impressions. Loved it. I loved it more than I thought it would, honestly. Uh, the only real bummer was that scratch on the starboard side. Um, I think it's not a major fix. Uh, obviously, it hasn't been fixed yet. Uh, I didn't notice any moisture, no softness. Uh, I think it's uh, a superficial scratch, and boy, that hull is thick. Um, but uh, you're going to want to get it fixed. Um, she needs a good clean, but generally speaking, uh, everything looked great. And, she, well, she needs some updating. Obviously, the electronics are older. Uh, the stove is older, but she does have LP gas, so that's good. She is rigged for that. Um, and, you know, we're a little light of information in terms of holding tanks and that sort of thing. But uh, generally speaking, that boat was a gem. And whether or not you brought the teak back or left it natural, that's up to you. But all of it looked in good shape. I didn't notice anything uh, soft or spongy walking around on the decks. It was hard to maneuver because of the cover. Um, but I'm psyched to see the pictures of her under full sail and, uh, you know, in the water. Um, but. Uh, my first impression of that boat is, wow, uh, what a steal at that price. If you have the DIY capabilities or a budget to get her fixed up a little bit, uh, you would have yourself a boat that's worth uh, twice what you're paying for it right now. Uh, the engine starts according to the yard. Uh, it was serviced uh, recently and it was rebuilt in 2016. Uh, it does need a good clean as does the bilge in general. But overall, the boat just needs a good clean and then you'd have just a sweet boat on your hands. So. Uh, Casey's contact information is below in the description. Uh, I had so much fun checking that boat out and uh, thanks for tuning in and I hope someone local buys her so you can take me sailing. So, um, see you next week. I've never seen a yacht like this in my dreams Sailing the seas in boats so grand it seems